We set sail at 12 o'clock on Sunday night, the whole fleet. 1954, I was just saved. I was aboard with a Christian skipper, the Premier, John Foreman. The gale, the storm, was on the Tuesday. We don't know. We weren't aboard. But the ship was lost with all hands. Tom Stephen was going to speak at the Bucky Conference on the Saturday, never turned up, and the whole fleet went out and searched. I had a long clip for clipping fish. And as I put it out and drew in this life belt, turned to the skipper and showed him quiet waters. The tears ran down his face. This was the first indication to me, you're saved. If you'd been aboard that boat maybe a week, two weeks ago, and it happened, you'd have been lost and in hell. And many things happened since that time to give me the absolute assurance that I'm saved. The whole life was changed. Now, I'm not a missionary, but I believe that since Conversions Day, I've been just that. You don't have to go to Africa. You don't have to go to China. There's a mission field at your doorstep. There's a mission field in your office. There was a mission field in my ship. And I saw very, very sad days. John Noble Stephen, who took me to the meeting, he was a wonderful fellow. We were lying the two after bunks about this between us. We discussed the word of God between us. And one night we were going off, and I said to him, What's on your mind? And he said, Well, this is what's in my mind. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this. He knoweth and understandeth me that I am the Lord. I said, John, that's wonderful. Where's that? And he gave a little smile and he says, that's Jeremiah. We shot the nets, 90 nets at our stem. We shot the nets. The boat was swinging up. John jumped onto the small boat, unfurled the sail, stepped down, missed his foot, and he's overboard. And the ship's swinging away. And I saw my dearest friend. In 20 seconds, he's out of sight. Never to see him until we get home. It took some time for his mother to go upstairs and look out his things. Weeks. And when she did, here, here it is, on his desk, his diary. And what's he writing? What's the last thing? 25 years of age. About his success in fishing? That he's got a third share of a, of a brand new boat? That this and this? No. No future but glory. Lord Jesus, have we. How bright is the prospect of being with thee. O home of all homes, with the Father above, what wonderful dwelling of infinite love. And then he wrote another verse. Past death, past sin with all its woes, o'erthrown forever all our foes, hope lifts our hearts to that blessed day and takes from death its sting away. He was my dearest friend. He led me to the Savior. He took me there. I'll see him in heaven. But then, we were walking aft one day, and I said to Robbie, Robbie, you are saved. Oh, I'm saved, he says. I got saved during the Billy Graham campaign. Very good, Robbie. We went down below. We had a Bible reading every night when we were finished fishing. The decks were cleared. The fish were down below, iced away. The hatch on, down below. Plate of fish soup, steaming. A cup of tea, and the Bible's out. Isn't that wonderful? Bible reading in the cabin. And the skipper says, I'll go up and have a look. It was a bad night. Go up and have a look. See what's happening outside. He went up. He says, sing a few hymns. David Stephen had a little accordion. He started to play. Robbie, he started to sing. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died for my sin to atone. When the darkness I see, he'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. As you're a bonny singer, Robbie, 
Singed again. I've never heard that before, and he sunk again. The next morning we rose. There was a gale of wind. We shot the gear. Fifteen boxes of cod. And the boys, I'm looking after the net. I went forward. Here they are, standing in a row, gutting fish. And the sea was coming over too much. I said, listen, forget about it. We'll come up before the wind, and we'll clear this in no time. Forget it. And then all of a sudden... And it came, washed in the wheelhouse windows. It washed the net overboard. Boxes, baskets, fish, three men, overboard. And I'm overboard. And I'm saying, I've dreaded this for a long time, and now it's come. I'm still under the water. I'm thinking, everything comes before you, before you even surface. Now it's come. This is it. This is the end. And I surfaced. I seemed to be so far away from the ship. And I said, Lord, there seems to be a lot of work for me to do yet. And I'm willing to do it. Lord, if you'll keep me up, I'll do it, Lord. And he kept me up. And the ship came down my way. And this young man, he remembered there was a plastic float. He untied it. There was six feet of nylon rope on it. And he said, he told me later, Lord, give me strength. Because I was still some distance away. And he threw it. And I was exhausted. I said, if I could only get to this bow, I would be safe. And the, the nylon rope came right into my hand. They threw a life belt. I was recovered. And I'm lying on the deck. And they all run and left me. And I wonder, what, what's, what's going on? And they run. And one of them shouted, Jump clear, Alec. And I crawled into the galley and lay down, exhausted. And then the engine eased down. And they came in one by one. I said, Fitz wrong. Mrs. Robbie's away. I just got forward in time to see Robbie's yellow oilskins vanishing underneath the sea. Robbie's away. It's not 12 hours since Robbie was singing, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died for my sin to atone. When the darkness I see, he'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. That was Robbie. He left his wife and a little boy called James John. And 20 years later, we were fishing here. James John's on the vigilant with our, our David and Philip. And James John, the little boy, now 23, knocked overboard on a dark January night. And my son David, without hesitation, he's in. And he swam towards him and he rescued him. Twenty years later, you see, his son and my son were in the sea together. David saved his life. And David was awarded for that brave deed. That's by the way. I was loosening the rope one day in Alapool. We're just about to go out. And I looked someone. Hello, Neil. Hello, Neil. Yeah, hello, Alec. What are you saying, Neil? Very quiet, boy. Hey, Alec, the wife got saved. Oh, your wife got saved? My word, I'm delighted, Neil. I'm delighted to hear this. I said, she hasn't been right since my father died. And and she, she saved, and I, I knew that you would be interested to know that. I said, I'm very interested, Neil. Very interested. All right. Neil, we'll be hearing about you next. And he just gave a little smile and walked away. Two weeks later, his wife said to him, Neil, I want to know about this other boy in Luke 15. The other, not the prodigal son, but this other son. I want to go up to Andrew Ritchie. Well, he says, come on, it'll soon be time for the bus. Up to Andrew Ritchie. What about this? Ah, well, he said, Vera, that's a picture of someone who thinks they don't need salvation. Okay. Neil says, is that please you now? Yeah. So they're coming away. He says, it'll soon be time for the bus. Andrew Ritchie put his hand on Neil's shoulder. He says, Neil, everything is in your favor now. Except time. And in four hours, Neil Strachan was in eternity. We all entered the bus. We just got over Glen Morriston, 
making for Kyle in the small hours of the morning and before four o'clock the bus left the road men were thrown out through the windows and we had a groaning it was pitch dark I knelt down the bus was on its side almost I felt this figure of a man I had a beard I said it's Neil we took him up laid him on a seat I took his hand out of his anorak pocket if there's someone unsaved here tonight, I want to tell you, you won't get that of a chance, maybe. I took his hand out of his pocket, and his cigarettes and lighter fell, fell onto the grass. I took his pulse. It was erratic. And in 20 minutes, I held his hand until he died. Everything's in your favor now, Neil, except time. But another man killed, Arthur Len was killed on the boat, and... Those are things that happen when you're at the fishing. Now, all those things help me to realize the brevity, the brevity of time. There were glad experiences. That was all sad experiences. There was glad experiences. We were working 20 hours a day at the fishing. All the, all the daylight hours we were working. And I had the first watch. And I was in the field house when this young man came in. I said, come on now, Billy, it's time you're away to bed. You'll soon be up again, I, he said. So we spoke a little time. I said, come on now, Bill. You'll have to get away to bed now. You'll be, you'll be tired. I like, I want to get saved. I said, well, Bill, I was reading my Bible at the time. Come in. And the wheelhouse shut the door, read from the Word of God, Isaiah 53. Finished with John chapter 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Billy Duthie trusted Christ as his Savior. I says, Bill, it's past 12 o'clock. We tore off the calendar, and there it is. He has it in his Bible to this day. And a new heart will I give you. Wonderful. And so he got saved. Lawrence Thompson. I preached to Lawrence Thompson. He'd been a jailbird. He, he just came away with us for a week. I told him, I said, Lawrence, but for the grace of God, I would have been there. And on the Wednesday night, Lawrence Thompson, a jailbird, he went to bed. When I came up into the galley on Thursday morning early, ready to shoot the gear again, he said, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior last night. You see, what I'm trying to impress upon the company tonight is there's a mission field right where you are. Wherever you are, the mission field is there.